Good morning. Good morning and welcome to the Lake Highlands Presbyterian Church, our 10 o'clock worshiping experience where we're doing our best to make disciples by reaching out, loving, caring, sharing, and inspiring spiritual and personal growth. It is so good to have all of you with us on today. And those of you who are joining us online, we're so grateful and thankful to have you with us as well. It is a good day to be in the house of the Lord. Amen? A good day to be in worship. Do have some announcements to make, my friends. Today is All Saints Sunday. We are celebrating All Saints Sunday. So when we move to the pastoral prayer during today's worshiping experience, we will acknowledge all of our sisters and brothers who have joined the church triumphant since this time last year. And then I will open the floor so that you can name anyone that you would also like to share at that point. I'll explain it again when we get to that part during our worship experience this morning. Of course, be it that we are now back open to the public for worship, we're also allowing our small groups and ministries and committees to meet inside if they so desire. And in that regard, our small groups and committees and ministries who are meeting, if you choose not to be masked during that time, you do not have to be masked. If you want to keep a mask on, that is fine. And we're also allowing people to bring in food. We're still not using our kitchen yet, but you can bring in food. But in this particular setting, in corporate setting like this, we are still asking everyone to continue to wear their mask, except for those who will be speaking to the public and singing. So we ask that you will continue to, to do that. And the session will meet again at the end of this month, and we'll talk about it again when we meet then and see what the decision is at that point. <clears throat> Excuse me. Please don't forget the cantata, the second Sunday next month, the second Sunday in December. And let me tell you, our music department has been working very diligently, very hard on this entire worship experience. You do not want to miss it. You want to make sure that you're here December 12th during worship for our Christmas cantata. Also, this month, on November 20th, we will have hilarity at 6 o'clock. So uh, we ordinarily do it once per quarter, and it's usually the last month in the quarter. But the last month, this quarter, is December, and the fourth Saturday in December is, uh, I think it's Christmas. So um, we're not going to have it on that day. We're going to do something else. But nevertheless, we're still going to have hilarity the third, the 20th, rather, Saturday, of this month. So please mark your calendars, six o'clock. On November 13th, we will have a church attic clean out and kitchen cleaning from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. This is what we need. Folks, those of you who have trucks, we need you to be here so that you can help us make runs to a nearby transfer station with items to be thrown away as well as items that we are going to donate to the White Rock Center of Hope. So we hope that you all will be able to be here. Again, it's this coming Saturday, November 13th, from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. This is what we've learned with these types of Saturdays. The more folks who are here, the faster we get done. Okay, I'm look, y'all look at me like you don't believe me. I'm, I'm telling you the truth. The more people who are here, the faster this type of work gets done. So please, 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 Come and help us with the church attic clean out and kitchen cleaning on November 13th. The men's prayer breakfast will begin meeting in hybrid fashion on Saturday, December 4th at 8 a.m. This means that we'll be meeting in person as well as online here at the church. Uh, the men will bring their own breakfast. If you've never been a part of the men's prayer breakfast, this is an outstanding time to begin. It will be, again, the first Saturday in December, uh, December 4th at 8 a.m. here at the church. If you would like to join us online, please let the church office know. We can give you the link uh, or we'll give your information to our director, Todd Plesko, who will get you the link for the men's prayer breakfast so that we can have you there as well. Again, we will be back in person as well as online on December the 4th. 
this November 21st is going to be a very big day here, the third Sunday of this month. First and foremost, that is going to be the day that our Thanksgiving dinner is uh, shared. And Leanne will come in just a little while to talk more about the grab and go on the 21st. But during that Sunday, during worship, we'll have a guest preacher. The Reverend Dr. Steve Sprinkle will be back. Dr. Sprinkle has preached here many times. We've always enjoyed him. He will be here again on that Sunday. But also on that Sunday, following worship, Mr. Daniel Williams will be here. Now, Daniel is a member of the More Light Presbyterian Board. We are a More Light Presbyterian Church, and I know that many of you have had some questions as to what that means and, and how that works itself into being or who we are as a church, if you will. Well, Daniel is going to be here to answer any questions that you might have, as well as, of course, to give a presentation. Now, the more light, to be a more light church simply means that we are a safe place for the LGBTQIA community to come worship and serve. But there's more to it than that, and Daniel is going to share. So for those of you, especially if you've got questions about that, I need you to make sure that you're here on the 21st so that you can get all the answers to your questions. If you have any thoughts on that, also need you to be here on November 21st so that you can meet Daniel and, and speak with Daniel. The session's summary of actions are now available. They will be, uh, they may have been in this past e-blast, but they will be in the e-blast. There are also hard copies in the Narthex. So if you've not had a chance to read them or pick them up, please make sure that you do so on today. We had this year, back in February, a very difficult time. A lot of houses and communities were without power, without electricity. It was just a very difficult moment. Well, this church at that time realized that we needed to do better in checking in on each other, watching over each other. And we established an emergency preparedness task force. This task force will do just that. In moments of crisis or times of trouble or emergency, this task force is going to be the line from the church to each and every one of you. This week, you will receive a letter in the mail. The letter is going to be, or actually a couple of letters, one envelope. You will receive the stewardship letter for 2022, as well as a pledge card for 2022. And in a little while, Jonathan and Kelly Toman will come and share the stewardship moment for today. But you will also receive a letter from the Emergency Preparedness Task Force. And that letter is going to explain how on Sunday uh, the, the 14th, there will be a time that they will call each of us from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. Why from 4 to 6 p.m.? Because the Cowboys play at noon, and they were afraid that nobody answered the phone from noon to 3. So from 4 to 6 p.m., <laughs> this is a test call, a trial call. So when you get the phone call, please do not ignore it. We need you to answer it. And they will have a couple of questions for you. Answer those questions, and then you can get on with the rest of your Sunday. But we really need you to comply when that call is made. You will be reminded about the call when you get the letter uh, around mid-part this week. Okay. At this time, I'm going to ask Leanne Kerner if she will come with any announcements that she may have for our youth and children and families. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, we have campfire conversations tonight. Uh, that will start at five o'clock. It is for those sixth through twelfth grade. So anyone join us for dinner at five, and then we'll have our conversation sometime around five thirty. It just really depends. 
Uh, also, we are on a journey of trying random Oreo flavors. So, um, friends, get ready for tonight's Oreo flavor. Uh, we will be having a grab-and-go Thanksgiving meal, like Perrin said. If you have not signed up, today's the last Sunday to sign up. So the sign-up deadline is the 10th, which is Wednesday. There is a form on the table in the Narthex, or you can use the online document, which has been going on the e-blast, and it's on the website, or you can just call the office and let us know, and we'll get you on the list. But we have to know by Wednesday. Um, and then I know this is, for some of us, it is Christmas time. For some of us, it is Thanksgiving. For people like me, it's both. Uh, so on the 22nd, we will also start distributing our devotion books for the Advent season. So this year, we're going to have, once again, an individual devotion for adults and then a family devotion that will be a weekly gathering that you can spread out at your homes daily or just do once during the week. Thank you, Leanne. And for those of you who may have questions, the Grab and Go Thanksgiving meal is a catered meal. It's a free meal. You do not have to worry about making any payments or, or any donations, anything along this line. It is a gift from the church to you. At this time, I'm going to ask the Toman family if they will come to talk to us just a little bit about stewardship and what stewardship means to them. special guest with us this morning who did not want to be back in nursery. <coughs> this is Isadora for anybody who hasn't met her and our other is Clara. That plays into one of the things that we wanted to mention or I guess I wanted to mention when we thought through um, why we give and there's obviously for all of us a ton of reasons why we give um, but the three I think that were unique for me that came to mind were our missions, our children, and our staff. So um, you know, during the pandemic, a lot of organizations, including most churches, have had difficulty securing not only funds for volunteering, but also resources, people who were free to volunteer. Um, you know, we've had a lot of limitations on how we could do that during the pandemic. And one thing that I've seen, and, and maybe I've seen some behind the scenes from being on session, but a l we've had so many people who still during the pandemic have made it their priority, both in terms of funds and in terms of their time uh, to continue to minister to our community, which has just been incredibly impressive to me. Um, I've seen people working still with Audelia, uh, doing, I know we had a group that did late cleanup this past weekend, and many other opportunities as well. And I've just been really touched by that, that even in a pandemic, we've, we as a church have made it a priority to be able to minister to our community. The second thing is um, our children. So obviously we are a little biased because we have two small children, so it's something that's really important to us, the work that Leanne and the others do um, to really help our children continue to grow. But I think also just as a church, we all probably understand that children are an important part whether you have young children or not. Um, you know, bringing in families and continually growing as a church, not, not that we need to be a, you know, a thousand member church, but having a continual stream of new families and people who wanna come together with us in worship is really important. And the fact that Leanne and the others who support her do so much work, it's incredibly impressive to me, having been members of larger churches that have done less with more people. So I'm sure you all know how amazing Leanne is, um, but that does lead into my third point, which is support of our staff. Um, I'm sh I think most of us are also aware how incredible our staff is at this church. We have, and I'm gonna miss people and I'm really sorry, but Leanne is fantastic with our children's ministries. Obviously we have one of the best, best pastors and pastor families that there is. Um, and then also Dorada with our music and we have Will, and there's so many people that are supporting each one of those spaces. I know that a lot of us, when we think of like the, the administrative line items on the budget, that's not really the most exciting thing to contribute to. 
but we also are aware that we wouldn't have the fantastic people that we have in the pastor's role and with his family and Dorada and Leanne and the other people who are doing all these incredible things to minister to us if we weren't be able to support them through the administrative line item. So if that's something that, you know, you kind of roll through your mind when we're starting to give that that's not the, uh, you know, the f most fun thing to give to, just consider how we are supporting those people and their families as they in turn support and minister to us. speak for a few moments. Um, I just wanted to say um, that when I thought about what I wanted to say today for why we give, the term that came to me was community. Um, and the, the, yes, that's very neat. <laughs> uh, yes. So we, um, and I think there's three parts to, to the community. I think there's our um, church community where we worship here on Sundays. I think that makes our relationship with God deeper. We, uh, we met seven years ago and coming from very different backgrounds. I'm a Catholic, she's a Southern Baptist, and we need to find something that met both of our uh, needs. And we went to many, many churches and we f and before we found this one, and we fell in love with it. Perrin's a big part, but we also know that just meeting together is um, an, a very important part to uh, strengthening our relationship with God. Um, at the same time, we've also met uh, quite a few friends um, through our, we've enriched our personal lives through the relationships we've created and the friendships we've created. I have to deal with the occasional uh, trolling text from Dorada from time to time, but <laughs> it's still worth it. Um, and then finally, the ministries, the outreach ministries that this church does. Um, you know, we wouldn't be able to make our community a better place to live in, but all the people that need our help. I think about um, some people only feel comfortable coming to a pastor when they need help. And if we don't have um, a strong community and a strong church, then we can't do those outreach ministries. And I'm just very grateful for all of that. So um, that's why we give. That's why we reassess every year um, and try to find a way to give a little bit more. Um, and then, of course, we have the child care, um, which is probably worth its weight in gold. So all those reasons are <laughs> why we choose to give. And I hope you take a moment to think about um, how you can be a good steward to our church. We appreciate all of you. Thank you. Thank you all so much. And Isadora, thank you for letting your parents share with us on today. <laughs> My friends, there are some things I want to share when it comes to our members. I do have some birthdays to share, but I also got some uh, news just before worship began um, that is a little troubling. Uh, many of you all are familiar with Charles Matz. Charles Matz was a longtime member of this congregation and um, helped with Boy Scouts and finance, stewardship and finance, and quite a few different areas. Well, we learned this morning that Charles Matz has suffered a major aneurysm and heart attack and is in critical condition. So, of course, we want to keep uh, the Matz family, as well as especially Charles, in our prayers on today and we want to continue to keep Roy McGowan in our prayers and Emily Turner as well birthdays that are happening this week my friends um, Jim Coke will have a birthday this week Seth Cook will have a birthday Brighton LaRouche uh, extraordinary drawer and artist as he is will have a birthday this week Taekwondo master Gerald Chinye Jr. <laughs> Alex, yes, he's, he's going to be a master. He's gonna, I saw his move that he does. Yes, we'll have a birthday this week. And also Glenn McCleskey will have a birthday this week. So happy birthday to all of you. Now, my friends, let's worship God. I'll have to say a little bit. Uh, if you see that I'm slimming down, you know, getting that great figure going, you got to thank Jonathan Toma for that because he and I are going biking all the time. He's getting me out there to get me riding the Katy Trail and everything like that. So that's an, another great thing of community as well. So when you see him after service, thank him for helping me lose weight. <laughs> all right, folks, at this time, let us please stand as we have our call to worship.
We gather now to give thanks to our God. We lift up our hearts, our prayers, and praise to God. We reflect and ponder the word and wisdom of God. We join together as followers of Jesus Christ, whose steadfast love endures forever. And at this time, folks, if you may please have your hymnals ready, we will be singing hymn number 326. Once again, that's hymn number 326. I'm going to do it a little differently this morning. For the first two verses, we will all sing. Then on verse 3, the women will sing. Then verse 4, the men will sing. That's right. <laughs> and then verse 5, we'll all sing together once again. So verses 1 and 2, everybody. Three women, four men, five, everybody all together. And at this time, let us worship. pray. Steadfast spirit, breathe into us new life when we are downtrodden. Lift up our hearts when the world crushes us down. Guide us into your ways of peace when the violence and heartbreak is unbearable. Refresh and restore us, Holy One, for there is so much that drains us. Remind us that renewal and rest are holy acts, and you have created us and called us into the holy work of love in this world. 
in the winds of November. May your spirit raise us and encourage us as the nights grow longer and the days short and cold. For you are the one who brings all things into renewal. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Lord, now let us pray together, together the prayer that you taught us so long ago, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You may be seated. First John chapter 1, verses 8 and 10 read, If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar and his word has no place in our lives. We are sinners saved by grace who still sin and need to be forgiven. And at this time, let us pray the prayer of brokenness and confession. God of everlasting love, we confess that we are short-tempered and short-sighted. We do not have patience for those who cry out for justice because we are focused on ourselves. We do not perceive how our lives are connected to others when all we notice are our own troubles. We fail to remember that our days are short, but you are the one who reigns forever. You remind us time and again that we are connected to each other. You have commanded us to love our neighbors as ourselves. You call us into your work of justice and reparation. God, hold us accountable. Remind us when we are focused only on ourselves instead of the world you called us to participate in. Keep us to your ways of love, justice, and mercy. Amen. And now let us pray in silence. There is more than enough love to go around, more than enough resources, more than enough of everything when we remember we are one body in Christ, when we remember we are all children of God. Know that you are loved and needed and that you need to love one another. When we love each other, our needs are met in the care of Christ's community. Go and work to build up the reign of God on earth as it is in heaven, for you are loved, forgiven, and restored. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. As previously mentioned, today is All Saints Sunday. But also, as we prepare to talk to the Lord, please again keep Charles Matz and Roy McGowan and Emily Turner in your prayers on today. The homeless at the bridge and the power of that ministry. And then another ministry that we support very well, the White Rock Center of Hope and all that takes place there. But my friends, after we have sung our preparatory hymn, Give Thanks, then I will return and we will hear the names of those whom we've lost this year, who have joined the church triumphant. And then after I have concluded with the last name, I will then open the floor and you may say the names of individuals that you would like to share who have also joined the Lord in heaven. There is no order to that. If 15 people speak at one time, that's fine. If five people speak at one time, that's fine. Or if it is one, then another, then another, that's fine. 
but that opportunity is going to be given to each of us. Let's prepare our hearts with give thanks. Indeed, Lord, we are grateful for all that you have done, for all of your blessings that you have given to us. And on today, we thank you for those servants of yours whom you have called home to receive their just reward, to live with you. So acknowledge, O Lord, bless and continue to help us to heal as we call their names. James Hatcher, Wendell Moore, Jack Martin, Jack Sutter, Robbie Musil, Fozzie and Ida Aliyah, Cindy Wadley, Eric Swanson, Rebecca Tudor, Jane and Bob Weber, Desiree Gomez, Sadie Ann Rice, five million worldwide who died from COVID-19. And now, friends, are there other names that you would like to share? Philip Daniels, Stephen Compton, Vicki Lavadelli, Austin Hartley, Todd Sellers. Are there any others? Are there any others? Are there any others? You have blessed us, O Lord, with these and so many more. And we say thank you. For our lives are better because our paths have crossed. We miss them, Lord, each and every one. 
and we pray for their families as we continue to exist, to live the life that you have blessed us with, with the hope that we too will see you for ourselves, that the day will come when we will open our eyes in paradise with you and with those whom have already joined you. Right now, continue to be with those in need. Charles Matson, Roy, Emily, Johnny and Don Kern. Continue to bless the bridge in White Rock Center of Hope. And we pray your continued blessings upon this church as we do our best to serve you. It is in your son's name that we ask it all. Amen. Amen. This morning's scripture, the first scripture comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 26 through 29, of which I will be reading from the King James Version. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God hath chosen the foolish things of the world and confound the wise. And God had chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty and base things of the world and things which are despised. God hath chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God. Diane Battersby was a music minister, a long time music minister at her church and uh, she had fallen ill to COVID to which a colleague who is the composer of this piece of which the choir will be singing decided to write for her. She came at peace at knowing that she was uh, preparing to pass on into heaven in which she did. And Joseph Martin wrote these words for her into which he gave to us into which though that her, that her livelihood, that her being is gone from this earth, the spirit of which she left on her church and in including the music ministry lives on forever. So it is the same that I give to you uh, of this church and of people not in the church right now at home, that for those that are near and dear to your heart, that though they are not here on earth right now, the heartbeat of which they have still lives within each and every one of you.
beautiful. Thank you. Friends, our second text for today, our sermonic text for this hour, comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 12, verses 41 through 44. But before we read, oh, that's right, Bible check, Bible check, Bible check. We encourage you, and we do. We encourage you when you come to the house of the Lord to bring your Bible with you. For those of you who are joining us at home, that you use your Bible during these times and that you are not waiting until this moment to open your Bible during the week, that you're using it more than just right now. Amen? Amen. All right. So Mark chapter 12, verses 41 through 44. Please listen and read along. Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put and watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. Many rich people threw in large amounts, but a poor widow came and put in two very small copper coins worth only a fraction of a penny. Calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, I tell you the truth. This poor widow has put more into the treasury than all the others. They all gave out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in everything, all she had to live on. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your blessings. We thank you for today all that you have done. And for the opportunity, yet again, to be here, we say thank you. So right now, make me less. Allow me to decrease so that you can increase and become more. And fix us by clearing our minds, opening our hearts, and unstopping our ears so we can hear from you. And upon hearing from you, we want to leave this place better than the way we arrived. Yes, Lord, we just want to be better than the way we were before. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you would, please turn to a neighbor, look at them good. And if you're by yourself, at home by yourself, or here by yourself, just look at me and repeat after me. Friend, today's sermon is called Confounded. Amen. <laughs> you know, uh, many times... <laughs> It's, it's very difficult for faith and logic to walk together. A lot of times it's challenging for faith and logic to hang out together. Because oftentimes logic requires empirical evidence, either mathematical, practical, existential, whatever. But faith is different. As the Bible teaches us, faith is the substance of things hoped for. Faith is the evidence of things, yeah, not seen. The text that Dorada read just a few moments ago shares that the Lord will take and use things that don't make sense to confound the wise or those who think that they know those who believe that they are incredibly wise and that's what we see to a degree in the sermonic text for today then as oft times is today there was an unearned blind kind of trust for those who had much and there was also an unearned blind kind of distrust for those who had little. So the text begins, and I like this. The text begins by sharing Jesus' actual location, his physical location. He's opposite the place where the offerings are being given. So I looked at that and I asked, why would Jesus be opposite? 
the side where the money was being given. Perhaps it was to free all present of pressured giving. This is when you feel forced to give rather than free to give. Hello, somebody. You know, I remember when I was a kid going to a lot of church services. My father's a pastor, retired pastor. He still preaches. <laughs> I mean, just come on over to the house. He's got something. He's got something. <laughs> but we went to a lot of church services when I was a kid. Some that he preached at, some that he didn't preach at. And a lot of times during those church services, when it was time to collect the offering, they would pass the plate. And after passing the plate, they would count it right there on the spot in front of everybody. And then somebody would simply say, uh, we need 150 more dollars. And then they'd pass it again. And again. And again. Until the report would come back, thank you so much. <laughs> and if you wanted to leave, which many of us did around that time, <laughs> you would give pressured, <laughs> pressured giving. You see, people knew who Jesus was, and if they saw him, they may not do as they felt led to do. But that's not the real reason why he sat on the opposite side. The text tells us why he sat on the opposite side, to watch the crowd put their money into the temple treasury. That's why he did it. A lesson was surely to be seen. And sometimes, folks, we can learn a lot just by watching what people do. And in so doing, lessons can be taught, some that will confine, confound the wise. Let me ask you these, this question. Have you ever heard anyone say, I don't give money to the church because all the money goes to the preacher? I mean, have you ever heard someone say that? I mean, I know none of y'all have ever said that. But have you ever heard <laughs> someone say that? Or I don't give to the church because all they're going to do is hold on to it and not help anybody with it anyway. Now listen, these statements are based on events that actually have happened somewhere. Somewhere there is a church where most of the money went to the pastor. Somewhere there is a church where they just collected money all the time and people who were in need never got any help. And for those who feel this way, it's very hard to believe why anyone would want to give to the church. Listen closely. By the day of Jesus' ministry, let me tell you what the temple had become in the presence of many. It's a place of religious prostitution. Money was a god. Decisions were made based on how much and how soon the money would come in. And people knew that the temple, the temple's use of money was corrupt. Yet in this text, there is an impoverished widow who comes and gives all that she has. Why would she do this when she is well aware, perhaps, of how the temple can misuse money? Why would she do this if she had an understanding of this institution that had corrupted practices? Why would she do it? I'll tell you why. Because she understood that giving was a righteous act. And her focus, her focus was on following the will of God rather than tracking where the money went. Remember, even during this day, not every temple practiced fiduciary infidelity. Not every temple. But enough of them did, and she gives anyway. And then Jesus praises her for her gift. That's 
what's confounding? Doesn't make sense that she would do that. And it doesn't make sense that of all the people who gave, Jesus would point her out and praise her. The more noted and obvious lesson in this text, yeah, you know what it is. It's the widow's sacrifice. It's a sacrifice. Although she had little, she was a true giver. I'll explain. You see, it, it, it doesn't take much to make us feel like giving to the Lord is too hard. Oh, hello, somebody. Doesn't take much. Doesn't take much. You got what you plan to give to the Lord, and then Marvel puts out another movie. <laughs> well, I'm going to go to the movie, but I'm going to need to eat something while I'm there. It doesn't take much to decide not to give to the Lord. But even in the most unimaginable circumstances, there is still an opportunity for the children of God to give. Early 2000s, I pastored in Waco, Texas. Some of you all know the church that I pastored. You came down and visited with us from time to time. The East Waco Cumberland Presbyterian Church in America. And we had a member of that church who had accepted his call into the ministry. And he was trying to work with me there in that congregation. A wonderful man. He lost his job. I mean, he lost his job. It was, he had a very large family. It was a devastating moment for them. And he came to me and he said, Parent, I'm not going to be able to give tithes and offerings because I don't have an income right now. But surely I can do something. Can you tell me what I can do? Can you give me an idea as to what I can do? <laughs> Let me tell you, this gentleman, he continued to find ways to contribute to the church. He drove the church van whenever we needed him to drive it, to pick up people and to take us different places. He and his family cleaned the church. The church that I was serving was not able to actually hire a cleaning service, so it took individuals to do it. They volunteered to clean the church. And ah, what a singer he was. Every Sunday he would sing heaven down and praise the Lord as best as he could. He knew that he could still give. The text says that there are others as well who gave, but they gave out of their wealth. The question is, and what would cause Jesus to say what he said, the question is, was their giving sacrificial? Was it actually sacrificial? Listen, um, I may not miss a dollar or two or five. Can't think of what I would do with just a dollar or two except to hope for another dollar or two. But a hundred dollars, two hundred dollars, it's a little different. A thousand dollars, two thousand dollars, that's different. And it may be the same for you. And when we give of our time, talents, and finances, look, y'all, it should mean something to us. Not making us mad or angry that we're giving, but it should mean something. I care enough to give. I care enough to do this for the Lord. And once given, we must have faith that the Lord will continue to provide for us. 
Jesus said, I tell you the truth, this poor widow has put more into the treasury than all the others. They gave out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in everything, all she had to live on. The lesson in true giving is taught by a woman with little. And to many, this is confounding. Confound. That's the term that we don't use much anymore. It's one of the reasons why I wanted the writer to read it from the King James Version because you don't find that word in other translations of this text. It falls in the category of some other seldomly used words like tarnation and <laughs> mendacity. <laughs> we don't use those words anymore. <laughs> but confound, that word means to stun to perplex, to bewilder. Sometimes it means to defeat. This woman's gift, my friends, foreshadows what Christ would do. In a very real sense, this widow is a type of Jesus that must be noted. 2 Corinthians 8 and 9 says, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that... Through his poverty might become, we might become rich. Doesn't make sense to leave heaven's riches and be homeless as Jesus was. It doesn't make sense to take a group of followers who seem to be inept at every juncture. It doesn't make sense to perform miracle after miracle after miracle to a group that keeps asking for more proof of who you are. It doesn't make sense to love a group of people who you know will ask for your execution. Doesn't make sense to let them kill you. But it's only confounding to those who don't believe. Oh, it makes good sense for those of us who have been touched by the Lord. Amen? Amen. You see, because of the Holy Spirit, we're no longer confounded. <laughs> Thought about how to end this sermon today. And a song that we don't often hear in church because it ain't a Christian song popped into my head. But it's a song of clarity, a song of freedom. You'll recognize it. I can see clearly now the rain is gone. I can see all obstacles in my way. Gone are the dark clouds that had me blind. It's going to be a bright, bright, sunshiny day. You remember that part? It's going to be a bright, bright, sunshiny day. No longer confounded. No longer confounded. No longer confounded. In Jesus' name, be blessed today. Amen. My friends, now we prepare to give to the Lord. And for those of us present, if you have come with your tithes and your offerings, there is a basket. Uh, that you may leave them in as you leave this place. Of course, we thank all of you who continue to give online. We appreciate it. And those of you who are joining us this morning online, we thank you as well. And if you want to give, for those of you who are on Facebook Live or YouTube right now, you can go to the church website and go to the giving tab and give. For those of you who are on our streaming service, you'll have to wait till worship has concluded and then go to the giving tab and give. 
but we give to the Lord because it is right to give to the Lord. We give to the Lord because it is an honor. Oh, yes, it is. It's a privilege to be able to give to the Lord. So, my friends, as Will comes with an offertory selection, for those of you who are here, just continue to meditate, continue to think of how good God has been to you as you prepare in your hearts and in your minds what you would give and when you would give. And those of you online in the circumstances that I have described, you may give at the appropriate time. But right now, let's be blessed by another gift that God has given to us. Friends, as we come to the Lord's table on today, let's remember all that the Lord has done for us. And for those of you who are joining us at home, if you have not gone to get your communion elements, I encourage you to do so at this time. And those present, yes, I hear you doing it. Go ahead and begin to peel that first cellophane layer back. Grace and mercy, love and forgiveness, sacrifice. The true meaning of those words jump out at us when we come to the Lord's table. For no one has been to us, been for us, done for us what the Lord has. In the times that we have needed the Lord the most, the Lord has been there holding us and helping us. And when we come to this table, well, put it to you this way. My grandfather, the late elder, Frank Lee Hudson, used to tell me and my brother when we were kids, if somebody does something nice to you, you ought to be decent enough to say thank you. He was right then, he's right now. When we come to this table, Thanksgiving is a feeling and a mentality 
we should possess. This table. A table that does not belong to you or to me, but belongs to the Lord. And the Lord has already said, whosoever will may come. So please understand this, my sisters and brothers. You are invited to partake in this glorious feast that we call the Lord's Supper. Let's pray. Again, we come to your table with thanksgiving in our hearts. Knowing that you have made this and all things possible. So we ask today that you will bless the bread that represents your body and bless the cup that represents your blood so that as we eat and as we drink, we're more like you in each and every way. In your son's name, we ask it all. Amen. My friends, on the night that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was betrayed and arrested, he took bread, he blessed it, he broke it, he gave it to them and said, take, eat, this is my body broken for you. In the same manner, he took the cup and gave it to them and said, drink all of this, for this is my blood poured out for the remission, for the forgiveness of sins. As often as we come to the Lord's table, the Lord says we ought to do so remembering him, doing our best to acknowledge who he is in our lives and who we are to be in this world. But you know my favorite part of the communion narrative. And it just seems so apropos today on All Saints Sunday. And Jesus said that I will not drink from the fruit of the vine again until you are with me in paradise. What a glorious day and time that is going to be. Amen? Amen. 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 My friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The mode by which we ordinarily celebrate this sacrament is called intinction. I will demonstrate that. And believe me, the day is coming when we will be back to doing that. And we will not have to use the communion packets as we are having to do right now. But we have to do it now to continue to be safe. So my friends, let us eat together. Let us drink together. Let us pray. We've come to your table. We've supped. We've dined. Now empower us, O Lord. Empower us to be your servants, not just in this place, but every place throughout your world. In your name we pray. Amen. My friends, perhaps there's someone who has joined us on today. And Jesus Christ is not in control of your life, is not your Lord and Savior. This invitation is for you to begin knowingly living your life to the glory of God with Jesus Christ being in charge, in control of who you are and what you are to do as Lord and Savior. Perhaps there's someone here today who would like to be a member of this church. Well, we'd be more than happy to have you as a member here of the Lake Highlands Presbyterian Church. This great invitation is for you. Perhaps there's someone who is a member of this church, or maybe you're a member of another church, but you've just gotten off track. You're not living your life for the Lord like you know that you should. Well, this invitation is for you as well to simply start over again, to begin again. And there's no need to be embarrassed about that. Many of us in this room, many of us online have done it. It's called to rededicating your life. I've done it a few times. 
It's a sign of just how gracious our God is. Today is a good day to make this decision. But if there is a struggle that's there and you would like to talk to me, please call me this week. Those of you online, you've got all of my information right there. Contact me this week and let's talk. But be it that day or today, we always want to make sure that it is the day that we get things right between you and the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. So as we sing our closing hymn, if any of these have touched any of you, you're more than welcome to join me. Come join John Walford, our service elder for this month. To God be the glory for the great things that God has done. As Perrin has said, as we finish our, our service, let us please stand as we sing hymn number 762, When the Poor Ones. Once again, that's hymn number 762. My friends, the charge for today is simply this. Give, give, because it is right to do so. Give, because it is the will of the Lord that we do so. And be blessed in your giving. Now may the grace of God, the love of Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule abide in each of us now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for joining us online.